felt like I was fading away. Next thing I knew, off in the distance, I saw white light. Jim Anderson was dying from a massive heart attack. The only signs of trouble came a year earlier, but his doctor called the symptoms stress-related. Jim was working 12-hour days as a supervisor at a wastewater treatment plant. But this time, Jim knew it was much more than stress. I was uh, resting in my bedroom, and all of a sudden I had a crushing pain in my chest, and uh, the pain radiated down the arm, up the side of the neck. Couldn't catch my breath. And I called to my daughter. I said, you're going to have to get me to the hospital. I'm not going to make it. A balloon catheter was inserted into his artery. He was stabilized and placed on a heart transplant list. But two days later, Jim flatlined. I could see everyone rushing into the room. But I couldn't hear the alarms going off. It's like I had gone underwater. The, the hearing had just, just faded away. That's when I began to pray. I knew I was dying. It wasn't a scare praying. It was earnest to take care of my family. As I prayed, it got darker to the point it went black. Next thing I knew, off in this distance, I saw white light. It was beautiful. It just wasn't blinding, but pure, perfect. As I started to go towards the light, I could see the out, outer edge of it begin to spiral. And I couldn't figure out what that was, but as I got closer, I could see it was the words of prayers revolving. The words broke off going into the light, and I followed into the light. The next thing I felt was being embraced, safe and secure. It felt wonderful. It felt like total love. Next thing I knew, I was looking down the room where my body was. I could see everyone working on me. I could hear what they were saying. There were two nurses outside of the room looking in. One said to the other, why are they working so hard? He's gone. If they do bring him back, he'd be a vegetable. I later on told her what she said. She about passed out. <laughs> then I thought to myself, where's Tabby? And instantly I was in the room where she was. And I'd just gotten finished with that prayer. Uh, you know, he's yours, Lord, because I knew that that was the only way he was coming back to us. God wanted him to. When she did that, it's yours. I was in right in on her face. Yours. When I saw her face, I saw every aspect of our life together. From the first day we met, our marriage, the birth of our children, all the emotions we've shared. I couldn't leave her. I just couldn't leave her. And I cried out to the Lord. I said, Lord, I love you so much, but please let me come back. I said, my wife needs me. My children need me so much. Please let me come back. The doctors and nurses didn't give up. They shocked Jim so many times that the flesh on his chest was burned. Then the doctors heard a heartbeat. I came back to a world of pain. They shocked me so many times. It's like coming back out of the water. Just, just my hearing came back. I could hear them telling me, I can't believe it, he's back, he's back. I said, can you hear me? And I took that first breath on my own. Have you ever tasted honeysuckle? That's exactly what that first breath tasted like. It was so sweet, so wonderful. And I just thanked the Lord. Jim was alive, 
but his heart still wasn't functioning properly. They put him into a, a coma, a medical Medicaid coma, and uh, to allow his body to heal. So I wasn't able to talk to him for days. Jim spent the next 17 days in intensive care. He flatlined several more times, and each time, Jesus asked him a question. The subsequent Where? times that I arrested and would go towards the light, he would ask, are you sure this is what you want? And each time I would ask to come back. Jim woke up from his medical-induced coma. His heart increased in function from 5% to 30%. He no longer needed a heart transplant. It was a long process, but basically it was uh, good to hear his voice again. <laughs> Very good to hear his voice again. His doctor implanted a pacemaker in his chest. Just a couple of days later, Jim was able to make it home in time for his daughter's graduation. One doctor told Jim he only had a year to live. That was over seven years ago. It's brought us closer together, so much closer together. Um, we talk about things now, and it, it's whatever needs to be done for the day, it, it's done. You know, we don't, don't focus on things that are trivial. Jim knows that every day he has with his family is a blessing from Jesus Christ. I try to witness to at least one person a day to let them know this isn't about me. It's about their life. And to know that he is there for them. And he loves them.